Good afternoon and welcome to Discovering the Spiritual Disciplines. Today we're going to be talking about fasting. You know, the New Testament church sometimes fasted when it was seeking God's will and it needed the grace and the strength to keep going to do God's work. They needed the strength to be faithful and therefore sometimes they fasted. Today we're going to be listening to Reverend Jeremy Schulte give us some ideas and tips on how we can practice fasting in order to deepen our relationship with God. I'm really excited to talk with you today about the spiritual discipline of fasting. If you were to look up fasting in the dictionary, you would read that fasting is the willful refrainment from eating for a period of time. Uh, so there's your technical definition, but I think most of you know what fasting is. Uh, fasting in a secular sense and the way we see it practiced today is mostly for dietary reasons or physiological reasons. Uh, so many people fast, not always as a spiritual practice, but a lot of times it's health related. But Christian fasting is truly that. It's the willful refrainment from eating. It's not a mandate. It's not a law. Uh, but it is something that people in the scripture are often called to do. It is a choice to take part in a discipline in order to grow closer to God. The past few years, fasting has taken on some new meanings. Uh, we tend to fast from food, but there are other things we can choose to fast from. One of those that you'll often see people fasting from is, is social media. Uh, so for instance, during the season of Lent where people tend to give up something for 40 days, someone may give up Facebook for 40 days. And so that's that willful refrainment from constantly checking their phone or logging in to see what's going on on Facebook. But for the sake of this particular uh, spiritual discipline, we're gonna focus on food fast as that's what we're most familiar with. Uh, fasting does not imply that what we fast from is necessarily evil. So when we fast from food, it's not calling food evil. Food is not evil, it's something that we need uh, to sustain us. But fasting is about our impulses and those things which we believe we are completely dependent on. So with certain foods, we may believe that we are dependent on them. We may believe we are dependent on coffee or we may believe that we are dependent on Coca-Cola. And so we give them up as a commitment uh, to showing that we are not totally dependent on those things, some of those things that we tend to consume more than others, but we are instead completely dependent on God. So why do we fast? Well, fasting is present throughout the scripture. Uh, first of all, fasting challenges us to return to God. Uh, it's oftentimes used uh, in, in a general sense related to, 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 to confession of sin and, and mourning and grieving our sin. In Nehemiah chapter 9, the Israelites fasted and confessed their sins. Uh, in the book of Joel, we read, Declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God, and cry out to the Lord. And so once again, in the Old Testament, fasting is often always tied to repentance and to mourning and confession. That's how we approach it on the way, that's sort of how we approach it um, on Ash Wednesday. But fasting can and should be practiced at other times as well. Fasting is also important for spiritual development, which is much of why we're including it in this particular series. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And so what Jesus is saying, a couple of things Jesus is saying there, he says one, when he says when you fast, he doesn't say if you fast, he says when you fast. So there was, assumption, there was an assumption in Jesus' time that we fast. It's something that we do as part of our spiritual development. But another important item in that particular scripture is that we don't brag about fasting or we don't want to let other people know it. In other words, let's say you're fasting from uh, Coke for 40 days or maybe you're, you're fasting uh, one day from all foods. It's not appropriate for you to get on Facebook and say, oh my goodness, this is so hard. I can't stand this fast that I'm doing right now. That's exactly what Jesus told us not to do. Fasting is a personal decision. It's one that should be kept personally because it is about your uh, spiritual development uh, between you and God. But fasting also can accompany major spiritual decisions. You may have been in a situation where you chose to fast before making an important decision. In Acts chapter 14, 
Paul and Barnabas, it says that Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. And so Paul and Barnabas, when they were making a, a major decision of appointing elders, uh, did so uh, by praying and fasting. Uh, fasting, as we know as Christians, is not a God-ordained weight loss program. In other words, we don't enter into a time of fasting or Christian fasting in order to lose weight. Uh, yes, sometimes there are, of course, health benefits, like for instance, during uh, the season of Lent, if we give up sweets, well, that's, we're probably going to be a little healthier for it. But that's not the point of fasting. It's a good thing, but it's not the point. Um, fasting is also not a hunger strike in this case. In other words, we're not fasting uh, because we like to be hungry or, or we want to make ourselves hungry. Fasting is a way that we can uh, monitor our hearts and draw closer to God. I would encourage you, if you're thinking about fasting, to, to don't fast if you're in a, in a significant health crisis. Um, you should be healthy if you're going to fast. In other words, if you're a diabetic or an expectant mother, fasting may not be the right spiritual practice for you. Of course, you can consult your doctor if you have those kind of concerns. Um, an alternative to a 24-hour food fast, which we sometimes do, is to fast from snacking. So for instance, you may not want to snack from food totally, but maybe, or you may not want to fast from uh, food totally, but you may have a habit of snacking throughout the day between meals. Maybe that's something that you give up. Or maybe you just like to fast from sun up to sundown. So maybe you get up before the sun rises, eat a breakfast, uh, and then eat your supper and don't eat anything until you eat supper um, after the sun goes down. So there are different ways to practice this discipline of fasting rather than just simply cutting out food altogether for a period of time. I would say rarely, if ever, do you need to cut out water from fasting. If you're involved in a fast or if you've engaged in a fast, I would encourage you to keep drinking water. Um, that is something that we need a lot more of, and it, it is not good for anyone's health to go all day without consuming any water. So when you fast in those moments of hunger, and you will feel them, there will be hunger pains, uh, there will be probably some emotional anguish from when you fast. In those times, be sure to monitor the attitude of your heart. Ask God to be your source of fulfillment rather than that which you are fasting from. Maybe in those moments you can internally or out loud, if you're in the right place, voice prayers or songs or meditations. Listen for God's guidance and direction for your life and refrain from calling attention to yourself in the midst of a fast. Fasting is something that us Baptists don't call on one another to, to practice very often, but it is a worthwhile spiritual discipline. And I would encourage you this week or in the weeks to come to consider a fast, a fast that is right for you, and to use that as part of your spiritual discipline. In ending this devotional session, I'd like to call your attention to Matthew 6, 24, which says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. Remember that food is not our master. Sweets, not our master. Facebook, not our master. TV, not our master. Of course, I'm naming common things that we give up because we sometimes turn them into our Lord and Master. Fasting is a reminder that we don't depend on any one of those things for our happiness and our joy and our fulfillment, but instead we place all of our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we count on Jesus to guide us through the spiritual discipline of fasting.